Hi everyone. <laughs> this is Diane and this is my final attempt at today's at today's card. Oh my gosh, you're not even you know oh hmm. how y'all doing? Happy Veterans Day. Thank you to all of you who have um, taken care of us and our country. We do so appreciate you. Well, I guess I have to pull out a couple more card stocks or I'm not going to be able to show you how to cut this. So I forgot to make the card last night. Or I forgot to do my recording, I should say. I, ma I made my card and I had stuff out here ready to go for last night. And my husband was getting ready to go up and get a shower. And I was like, oh no, I forgot to do my card. I said, that's all right, I'll do it in the morning. So <laughs> I did it this morning. I was almost the whole way done with it and realized that I had folded one section incorrectly and I don't have enough paper to show you how to fix it. So I started the second one and I just was now through um, showing you how to fold all the cardstock and my son called and instead of hitting pause, I hit stop recording and so it's gone. Yep. So last time, right? I had a I had to just take my phone and put it downstairs and that way I won't be able to tell if it rings or texts or anything. And in the meantime, my cousin texted me to tell me a friend of hers passed away. And um, yeah, so just totally rattled today right now. And I need to go get my groceries. I need to go get my turkey for Thanksgiving. So I hope you're all well. <laughs> it's also a monsoon here. So I don't know, maybe this is God's way of saying, just stay inside and do your cards and the rain will let up in a little bit and then it'll be better for you to go. Maybe. I'm making a cascade card today. A Christmas card. A Christmas cascade card. <laughs> and um, this, this was all the decorations from the very first one we were going to do. Then I don't have enough paper to show you. So we just set all that stuff aside and said, forget it. We'll use those on something different. I used polished pink and uh, I think it was Whimsy and Wonder. Is that the name of the paper? Whimsy and Wonder designer series paper from Stampin' Up! to do this card. I found Jan B. from the UK who made this cascade card inside a gatefold card with a belly band, which I loved because it gives us a little bit more room to add our our messages and we could layer white panels on the inside if we wanted to do additional stamping. Traditionally when you see a gatefold card it's pretty much like this and you have maybe the front to add a little um, greeting or something and then the rest of your stamping would have to go on the back. So putting it inside a gatefold card I thought was really really wonderful. This is going to make a 5 by 7 card. It's going to take you a minute to make it. This isn't one of our five minute cards. And you're going to go through some card stock, especially if you screw it up as many times as I have. So let's try to do this right the first time. How's everybody doing? I'm glad you're spending a little time with me. Welcome to my new subscribers. No, my, my videos are not always this horrible. Well, it's not really horrible yet. See, I've already got this part done, but I can't show you how to do it unless we cut cardstock again. So <clears throat> you need three pieces of your same color of cardstock that you're going to use. And they need to be cut to seven by ten and a half. Yeah, so the part that I already had done was kind of like whoops, the important part to show you how to do the well that and cutting the pattern paper are the, probably the two most important parts. Ten and a half and seven. Actually you need three of these. The first one I already have scored and set aside though that will be our card base and I can show you that without having to cut another piece of cardstock. So seven by ten and a half, three of them. You will have some scrap left from this, but there will be enough that you can use those scraps, you know, to die cut or do some stamping on for this or another card. Okay, so for our card base, 
And this was also a seven by 10 and a half. We're going to score. We're scoring at two and a half, two and three quarters. And I will put all the dimensions in the description box below. Seven and three quarters, seven and three quarters, and eight. And this is going to give us little spines on each side. Okay, we'll fold that in just a minute. So let's set that aside. Our two panels that are going to be the cascade, we need to score at two and a half. Now watch me hit the cord now on the camera and shut it off. Two and a half, five, and I should have this memorized because I've done it like 18 times in the last two days. Seven and a half and ten. Seven and a half and ten. Maybe this will, maybe I'll get it right this time too because the last time I did make a boo-boo. I've made several boo-boos. <laughs> and this is going to give us a small one half inch fold that will be on the inside of our card. Okay. And let's do the same to our second panel. Scoring at two and a half, five. Oh, and then this is going to take forever to upload. So I want to get through this and try to keep it kind of a short, well, not short, but a reasonably length video. Seven and a half. Come on, it's up there. There you go. Seven and a half and ten. So now we're going to have a left side and a right side. Fold our half an inch under on each of these and lay them in front of you with a left and a right. So whatever we do on the left, we're going to do on the opposite side of the right, keeping our folded edges together. This is where it will meet up inside our card. So on the outside of the left, I want to mark up two inches from the bottom of the cardstock, two inches, two, and then I'm going to do the same thing on my right panel, but I'll do it on the outside edge, here over here. <clears throat> Sorry, am I, am, I, am I off camera? Two, two inches up on the right. And then, take our trimmer and we're going to put that two inch dot in the track. I need to look at this. Is this a side? No. Is this a side? Going up. Okay. Two inches diagonally to where our half inch fold mark is. You don't have to cut through anything else. And, okay. and there's one side of our cascade. So now we have our other side. We're going to go from our two inch mark to this corner where our fold line is. I'm out of room on my table, completely out of room. I have everything all over the place for um, upcoming workshops. So here's our two scrap papers that we'll just save because we can maybe do our greeting out of that. Now we want to do a valley fold on this first large one and make sure that we have that even with the bottom of our card. We want to make sure those are all nice and straight across the bottom. And let's go back one at the valley. And let's just stop right there. Okay. So 
So we have this one on our right side. Just stop with your little airplane wing sticking out there and let it go. Yeah. Okay. Again, on our left side. Hold a valley and then back and make a mountain, making sure that our bottom edges are as straight as can be. And we have two airplane wings sticking out. Well, it does look like an airplane, doesn't it? This last one that we folded should be four and a half inches long. Four and a half. Well, that turned out right. That's a good thing. So we're going to mark down from the top two and a quarter inches to get the center. Two and a quarter. And the same on this one. Two and a quarter. And you'll know you're on the right fold if it is four and a half inches long. Four and a half, go two and a quarter. Okay. So now you need your snips. And we have two things. Where we folded our half inch under, you have a little piece that sticks out there. Just snip that off. You don't need it. And it's going to stick out of your card and make it look wonky. Now where our two and a quarter inch dot is, on one panel, we are going to cut up from the bottom. Important thing to note, okay? Up from the bottom to the dot. And on the other side, we're cutting down from the top. Doesn't matter which one is which, just do one from the bottom, one from the top. And let's intersect those. Making sure that our bottoms meet up. And if they don't, you can just trim your panel up that needs to go a little bit higher. Okay, so back our little half inch folds put back down. These are now stuck together in the center. Now we can take that front panel and fold it back. If we would have continued folding it before intersecting our cascades, they would have been folded um, in the opposite direction. Take my word for that one. Okay. <laughs> yep. That was my very first one I messed up. I um, started gluing all of my designer series paper together and then realized I had the front flap folded in the other direction. Not nice, not nice, okay. I find that it's easiest just to leave this together and when we go to cut our um, pattern paper, lay them on top so I know where my paper is going to go because if you take them apart, and I just happen to have the extra one. <laughs> if you take them apart and you start layering your designer series paper on these, when you fold them up, you're going to have them on some of the wrong sides. Okay. So let's set this aside for a minute. Let's take our go back to our card base since we're doing our folding. Fold on both of those four lines and give a little burnish. Okay, and when we put our cascade in there, those little spines on each side will give us um, room for the inside of that card to expand a little bit and not swoosh it. Swoosh it down. All right, now we need designer series paper. We will need four panels for the inside, plus two coordinating panels for the outside. I made mine the same as my cascade. You can make these alternate. You can make your panels whatever color or whatever design paper you want them to be. I think I'm going to try to do the same thing. I'm going to use a coordinating piece for my insides here and then make my front panels the same as my cascade panels. Okay, so I've chosen some black and white. Oh my goodness, I have so many um, pieces over here right now. Okay. 
And the paper that I selected is from, I, I hope I have, doesn't matter. I mean, I, I doubt that this is available anymore. And I don't know that I have a name of it. Oh, there it might be. This was Mary Music Specialty Designer Series Paper. And I just thought with the uh, uh, sweet sorbet, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that uh, black and white would be pretty. So I chose, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. All right, that's what happens when you've talked through three videos and you haven't done anything yet. So you want to be careful when we're using a directional pattern. And this is, I think this will be my inside panels. And then this is going to be my cascading design and my front page design. I just thought that would be pretty. Look at that. I did this, I was practicing with some dies one day and I didn't know how they were going to cut. And these are just partial die cut dies. They don't go the whole way through so that you can make them dimensional. Ooh, that would be pretty. I'll take any one with them. Okay. I digress and I shouldn't. Focus, D. Focus. Okay. So we need then. And I just want to check myself. Because my first one, I did this wrong. When I'm doing directional paper, we need two pieces that are six and seven eighths by nine and seven eighths. Don't mind me. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm going to do this right way. I don't know. I, I don't know why for the first card this was so easy for me and I have been struggling. Okay. We're going to do one. So nine and seven eighths and I, I just think I'm doing this the wrong way again. Nine and um, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> Thankfully, I have enough of this paper that if I mess it up, I'll be okay. I just don't want to keep messing up paper. And six and seven eighths. Six, four, five, six, six and seven eighths. And then we have to measure up on this side, one and seven eighths. So this is kind of what we just did on our cascading. One and seven eighths. This is gonna be a little hard to see on black paper. And we're going to cut that to the opposite diagonal. I'm trying not to lose my dot because I can't see it. Okay. And to the opposite diagonal end. Oh my goodness, I think I cut it right. Thank you, sweet Jesus. All right, so let's do our second one. Nine and seven eighths. You know, why don't I just make a note for myself on here? Nine and seven eighths. The nine and seven eighths. With the pattern in correct orientation. Does that make sense? Correct 
orientation. Okay, maybe I'll remember that way then. Okay. Nine. And six and seven eighths. Slide over there, buddy. Six and now when we mark up, we want to make sure that we do this on the other side because this is our right panel. <clears throat> we just did our left one, so we want to go up one and seven eighths. if I cannot lose my pencil line <clears throat> to the opposite corner. No idea. I have no idea where I put it. Ah! Is it under here? No. There it is. Yay. Let's not freak out too much. Okay. And that was my extra sheet so that when I messed up, I would have one. But you know what? The other side of this is pretty too. Yeah. Okay. So then, and here is where I find it useful to have my cascade beside me, just to make sure I'm doing this right. I it's in my way. Lost my pencil. <laughs> okay, we're going to start on the short edge and we need to cut over two and three eighths of an inch. But I can't do that with my diagonal, so I'm just going to flip my paper over. I'm going to go two and three eighths and make my first cut. And I'm just so happy that I did it right. And then we're going to trim off an eighth of an inch. And I need to concentrate on this because when I did the video the one time I was chit chatting and I cut off a quarter of an inch. Okay. And then two and three eighths again. and then trim off an eighth of an inch. And then two and three eighths again. And on this last panel, I'm gonna trim my eighth of an inch off of the outer edge, just to get that point narrowed down to make my um, border around there nice and even. Which one is this? This goes here. This one will go. All right. No. It's here. And this one goes over here. All right. And we're going to do the same thing with the second sheet. Again, I need two and three eighths of an inch. So let's turn this upside down. Two and three eighths. Trim off an eighth. Two and three eighths. Off an eighth. Two 
one more time. And trim an eighth off of the outside edge. Yeah, so I don't know how long this is going to take to upload. I know the video will be really late today, and I apologize. I'm so sorry. Just one of those ones. Anything that could have gone wrong, it did. Mm -hmm. All right. Yay. Yay. Well, that's kind of pretty with the red. Okay. Get these little scraps out and glue these on. You can use um, liquid glue or tape runner. I'm going to use some liquid glue. Make sure my cascades are stuck together. They are. Because I want just a little bit of room to move around if I need to on here. And remember, we're only gluing paper. You're not making a shelf. So you don't need a whole lot of glue. You don't really want it to ooze out and squeeze all over and be yucky. Yep, we have our Christmas card workshop coming up next week. And I think I have a new lady coming, so I'm excited to meet her. And then I'll have my women's organization that's making Christmas cards. I think they're right after Thanksgiving. So Amazon should be dropping off some adhesives for me today to make sure I have enough adhesive for everybody. That's a very bit of red glue. And I was able to find those little fine tip bottles that I think will be <clears throat> helpful for everybody when they're trying to get in the little nooks and crannies sometimes. The regular size glue tip is a little bit too much. Okay. As I said, you can take your card apart and um, put your panels on there. Just, you know, make sure that you're getting them on the right sections. And this, I just stuck my hand in the glue. And no, I don't have, oh, yes, I do. I'm out of baby wipes up here. I keep forgetting to bring up a new pack of baby wipes. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the one thing about this weather, too. It's just... <coughs> Excuse me, really messing with uh, sinuses and and the even worse part is I know what's coming right behind this rain and it's not my favorite stuff. Oop. Not a winter person here. Don't like it. I'm not going to pretend that I do. So, um, how am I going to get that inside piece without taking it all apart? Uh, there you go. I just don't, I don't trust myself taking them apart and trying to glue everything onto the right panel. I really do think I would mess that up. So this just works best for me, keeping my card pretty much together. I need to keep the, my grid mat covered up there because I know it makes the lighting even worse than what it is. And look at this. Look what we have. Yay, it's working. I better shut up, right? Great. 
Okay, so let's get this put onto the inside of our card and then we can do our panels. So now we have two score lines on each side. The inside score line closest to the center of our card. Now, now I'm going to take my cascade apart. <clears throat> Should match up to our outermost fold of our cascade. Okay. So I'm going to add some glue to this half inch um, folded piece I have here. Come on. And I'm going to try to get that folded section as close to the center as I can and keep my outside panel even up with is that a lot to remember? Sorry. We're going to keep this panel even with the score mark. And we're going to get that folded panel <clears throat> on the center of our card base. Okay. Give that a nice little burnish there. And then we can take our other one and we'll do the same thing. Add glue to that half inch strip. And make sure now that we butt this half inch strip up as close to the left hand side as possible. We want it to, oh gosh darn it, add it and I moved it. We want it to be kind of seamless. Did you see that just pop right up there? Put it on there. Bottom's not together. Squeeze it over there. There we go. See, I have a little bit of glue. Well, it's going to get covered up with our panels. I was going to say I could use my glue eraser, but that is going to get covered up. And I think all right. Now we can connect our two panels carefully back together. And look at that. Yay, yay. All right. When we go to make our little greeting, I just stamp this on some basic white and then die cut it um, using the label dies where they go because I think that's what we're using again. <clears throat> the tasteful label dies because I'm using my greeting from so many stars I wanted to put um, I think I'm going to put the Oh Holy Night on the front and Love and Peace on the inside. I'm not sure yet. So anyways, <clears throat> in order to keep these two closest panels together, we're going to make a little brace. I don't know if you can see it on the inside here. I made a little brace and put it just to support these two panels. And then we'll make a little bit of a, a little bit of a support panel to put behind our I know it's very hard to see. <clears throat> Put behind our greeting. So for our little support panel here, we need get some of these dyes out of the way. Here's my ink. There we go. I don't know if I'm gonna use that or black to be honest. Okay. Oh, 
we didn't make our belly band yet either. Boy, this is going to be a long video. Okay. So we have to put our support behind there. I think it works best with a piece of cardstock. I think that using um, pattern paper just doesn't really give you a whole lot of support. So I'm just going to use a piece of that scrap that we cut off. And I'm cutting a two inch piece by one and a half will work fine. Oh, it already is one and a half. How lucky for me. And then let's score it in the center at an inch. And while we're at it, let's make the one that's going to go behind our green. And so this is three in, oh wait, I don't know if I can because, oh yeah, it'll work. Three inches, whoops, cut by three quarters of an inch. I told you this one was going to take a minute, you guys. There's no quick card today. Now take our three quarters of an inch little strip here, and we are going to score that at a half an inch. One, two, two and a half. And what this does is going to give us a little brace to put our front greeting on. Okay, so it'll look like a U. Put that over there. This one we can fold in the center. <clears throat> and we want a mountain fold. Thank you. I'm going to glue this behind here. Try to line my mountain fold up with my center. Oh my goodness. Wiggle it all over. Huh? Move my second side down. Am I still on camera? I hope. Oh. All right, so now when we close that, it's inside, and we open it, that's perfect. Okay? It just holds our front, our front panels together from flapping around. All right, so let's now cut our So we're going to need um, oh, I was going to do my front panels the same as my, with my musical note. Mm -hmm. And so these will all need to be two and an eighth by six and three quarters. So again, just think about it for a minute. Two and an eighth will be how how narrow we need them to be for each strip. Two and an eighth. By six and three quarters. I'm not quite long enough. Six and three quarters, and I think this is not long enough to make my second one. So two and an eighth, two and an eighth, six and three quarters. I guess these ones I could have had cut ahead of time. Well, it wouldn't have mattered because <laughs> my paper was all messed up, right? Okay, so then we need four pieces. For our inside, the same measurements. Two and an eighth 
I don't have enough room for my 12 by 12 sheets here. Two and an eighth. Five, six and three quarters. Yep, I'm cheating. I'm trying to get them all cut together here. I don't know if it'll work. I hope. Yes, it did. Oh, I think it is actually running out. I have more. Let's put this one. Oh, you can't possibly be running out too. It, I, I guess I could because when um, we do get done with workshops, I just take all the glues and tape runners and stuff that we've been using. Just put this on the center of your inside panels and try to keep your edges lined up nice and straight. Um, I just take all the leftovers and put them up here in my, in my work bins. And then I just use them until they're gone. You know, that way I can make sure that folks at the workshops have full glues and stuff to use and they're not going to run out in the middle of their project. But none of it goes to waste then because I can keep using it. <clears throat> so yeah, quite often I am running out, I guess. Well, <clears throat> I will say with the weather being as yucky as it is, I don't have to really worry about getting my hair done too neatly before I leave for the store because I think it's going to get totally saturated. All right, I wonder if I should put this on the outside. You know what? I think I might. I think I will. Just because these all go together so pretty. inside is hanging down just a little bit. I should have moved it up a tad more. But I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. <clears throat> Make our belly band, which is 1 by 11. And I don't think I have any 11 inch strips left. Oh, or do I? No, that one's 10 and a half. So 
but we just need to cut a one inch strip off of our eight and a half by 11. And then we're gonna take this and just wrap it around our card base that we hold together for a minute. And this is gonna give us our um, little crease lines. We need to crease them, allowing it to overlap just a little bit in the middle. I can fold these on those marks that we just made. It just saves from trying to measure more, especially <clears throat> if your card base came out just a little bit off. You know, because that's never any fun. Let's glue our belly band together. Oh goodness, come on. In here. and get our greeting ready. And so I have lots of scraps of um, just heavy, basic white card stock. And I know I don't need huge pieces for this, so my little, little thing here to pop it up. I know I want my holy night since I'm using musical notes, right? And I guess I will do this in black. Yes, I am because you know what? I'm gonna put. Uh, I'm going to put a red background. Before I do that, let me grab my tasteful label dies and see which one this will fit in. Oh, I wish it would fit in that small one, but I know it won't because that would be really pretty. Can't fit in that either. Is it gonna fit in this? Hmm, not so much. It will fit in that one, and then we can use this as our background. Okay, so I have to make sure my, the reason I wanted to do that was to make sure that my cardstock was big enough for my stamped greeting. I'm going to use some um, VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink because I like how dark this stamps. That aside for a moment. And get out. <sighs> uh, Love and peace are different and I don't want to do that. So what did I do? I did Oh Holy Night, hoping, how about, may you enjoy this beautiful season. Oh, I was going to say, where is that stamp? I think that will probably fit in the same one. I don't think that should be, um, Oh, let's 
not risk it. Let me grab a bigger piece here. Sissy, what's the matter, honey? Again, that was from the So Many Stars set. Let's cover up my ink. And let's get these die cut. So I can do a piece of Sweet Sorbet with a large... <clears throat> This is using one of those scrap triangles that was left over from when we did our, <clears throat> our cascades. Ooh, and how is that for close? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Away. No lost dies this Christmas. <laughs> Boy. So, thanks for um, sticking through all this with me. I told you this wasn't going to be one of our five-minute cards. Yep. Take a minute and a little concentration and thought, and it will work out just dandy. Oh. This on our background. Try to get it lined up in the center. Hold it straight, huh? And this will go onto our belly band. I do want to make sure this goes around my card before I do that. Just because I'd hate to get the whole way through that and find out it didn't, but it did. It's fine. Okay. Now, when we put this on, remember only to put adhesive across the center. Don't get it around your whole um, thigh. Or it will go right off of the belly band and onto your card. I don't really want that. Okay, line this up. So I will, um, because this is, I don't know, I guess I will be able to. I was going to say, I don't know if I'll get the dimensions I'll put on there by the time you watch this, but I will. They'll be on there. All right, now let's use our, our little um, pop-up that we made. And we're going to put this in the center of our card, or our greeting, our sentiment, whatever that thing is in the middle there, that die cut thingy. 
that in the center. Sorry, I gotta pull this forward towards me so I can try to get it semi-straight. And then I knocked it off. What a goofball. Okay, put it on there and stay. Good little piece of paper. Okay, we'll open that up and put this on that front section. So I will add a little bit of glue to this tab and this tab. Put this centered on our bottom panel. Why isn't that? What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Oh, I know, I know. Stop it. This has to be together. I don't have my back tabs together. Now I gotta use my glue eraser and get that glue off. That's okay because I had um, some snowflakes in here I was going to add to this. Now I know where I have to add them. <laughs> so I do have snowflakes cut out of different uh, glitter papers that I've just done over the years. And I also have some of these really pretty snowflakes from Stampin' Up! Wonderful snowflakes. I just think that these, I can't really put them on too much of this because they'll hang over. Well, they're not adhesive. I like these. I think they're really pretty. They barely fit in that panel. Fit on it here? Oh, it might. Okay. All right. I'm good with that. I'm good. That's whatever. Let's just add again. I'm not building kitchen cabinets, so I'm just going to add a little bit to the center and maybe one more up there hmm, it has to be inside the fold okay I don't think that one is. There we go. We're only going to fit one way I think, to get inside the fold. And then I can use some of these little glitter ones. my finger. So I hope you like this card. I know it, um, like I said, these are probably not the ones you're going to mass make for Sending out to all your friends and family. But it might be one that you want to have special for, I don't know, your hubby or, like I said, I, I probably 
would um, do this to my sister. And I'm going to add one to the front as well. Just because I have them. Oh, goodness. Me and glue, you know? Oh, did I hit you in the head? I'm oh, sorry. So let's close this up, put our belly band on, and see what we have. Oh, my snowflake just fell off. I didn't give it much time to dry, did I? And it's a glitter paper, too, so it's not going to... So here we go. Pretty, pretty. You could have more snowflakes on the front if you want to. Slide the belly band off. I might have to adjust that because I really want it to hang over the edge of the card and not fit in the envelope. All right, belly band off, and then we can open up our card, and look at that. I can't see it too much from the, oh, I love it though. I love it. Oh, so this one took a little bit of time, but I'm thinking it was worth it. I love it. I hope you have a chance to um, try one of these Cascade cards. Just like I said, think it through. Take your time. I would only cut one piece of your pattern paper at a time until, if it's directional. If it's not directional, it's not quite as difficult. But if it's directional, maybe just cut one. Make sure you're cutting it in the right orientation and then cut the other one. And again, I'll have those dimensions listed so go give it a try and thanks for being with me bye everyone